page 350, chapter 23, tax money. When the Pharisees held counsel on how they could get or catch Emmanuel in his speech, they sent to him their disciples and some of Herodias' people. Then they said, quote, Master, we know that you are truthful and teach the way of the laws and recommendations rightly, and do not inquire about anyone, since you do not esteem the human beings' reputations, but only the recommendations of God. Therefore, tell us your opinion. Is it right to pay tax to the emperor or not? But Emmanuel sensed their cunning and said, quote, You deceivers, hypocrites, and swindlers, how low in your sageness or in intellect, and in the belief in your God are you, that you tempt me in such an inconsiderate or foolish manner. Show me a tax coin so that I can heal you of your inconsiderateness or foolishness. And so they gave him a coin. And he said to them, quote, This is the emperor's. He then said to them, quote, Give therefore to the emperor what is the emperor's, and give to the Ishwish what is the Ishwish's, and give to the creation what is the creation's. Yet beware and know that the Ishwish and the Emperor are human beings, but above them is the might or almightiness of the creation, and you must give the highest honor and dignity to it. Thus the Ishwish and the Emperor are indeed rulers over human species and peoples. Above them stands the creation as the highest might, to which they are subordinate or subject in the law and recommendation as is every human being and every life. When they heard his speech, they were astonished, left him alone, and went away. Rebirth, verse 11. On the same day there came to him Pharisees and the Sadducees, who hold the opinion, there is no coming again, or rebirth. They asked him and spoke, quote, Master, Moses has said, quote, When a man dies and has no children, his brother shall take the other's wife as his own wife and beget descendants for his brother. Once there were seven brothers among us. The first one was married and died, and because he had no descendants, he left his wife to his brother. So did the second and the third until the seventh. At last the woman also died. Now, you teach there is a living again, or rebirth, whose wife will she whose wife will she be among the seven in the living again, or rebirth, for she was wife to all of them. Emmanuel, however, answered, saying, quote, You are mistaken and do not know the unfalsified writings of the elders, nor do you know the laws and recommendations of the creation. Truly I say to you, Mose never gave this recommendation. But he gave the recommendation that a brother should take his brother's wife to himself in honor. So if one died, the other would take care of the widow of his brother. How is it possible for a brother to beget descendants for his brother, since the seed, or sperm, of every man is different? Therefore, the one cannot beget the others as his own with the same seed. And in the living again, or new life, as new selves, or as new personalities, they will all be strangers. So the one will not recognize the other. Therefore, no law or recommendation says the wife then belongs to the one or the other. In each life, as a new self, or as a new personality, every human being determines for him or herself whenever and whomever he or she marries. Thus, he or she can marry whomever is not spoken for. Take heed of the laws and recommendations of the creation, which teach that in a living again as a new self or as a new personality, the human being has no memory of the former lives. Thus, your question is superfluous. At this point, it is always only a true prophet who truly knows and understands the laws and recommendations of the creation. So he also follows these and lives in wisdom and may experience memories of former, former lives from the messages or information laid away or stored in the invisible firmaments, or storage banks. 
But since you will continue to live in yawning darkness for a long time as God-believers, this cognition and the wisdom of the spirit or consciousness and the laws and recommendations of the creation will long remain hidden from you. Other peoples will advance beyond you, so they will evolve highly in spirit or in consciousness and will follow the laws and recommendations of the creation. So it will be that other peoples will be superior to you in the spirit or consciousness and will gather great wisdom and so in a distant time a new true prophet will appear among them and he will gather or retrieve memories from the invisible firmaments or storage banks. But you and the peoples, you and they who are God believers, will long remain poor in the spirit or consciousness and thus drift in roaring impenetrable darkness. Thus namely, whoever loads guilt upon him or herself shall also carry it and arduously strive to unload it. The Greatest Recommendation Verse 29 But when the Pharisees heard that Emmanuel had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered and held a council. And one among them, a scribe, tested him and asked, quote, Emmanuel, which is the foremost recommendation in the laws? Emmanuel spoke and asked in return, quote, Whose law are you thinking of? The law of the emperor? Or are you thinking of the law of your God? Or are you thinking of the law of the creation? The scribe said, quote, I am thinking of the laws of our God. Emmanuel, however, said, quote, The highest recommendation in the law of the creation is this, achieve the wisdom of knowledge so that you may wisely follow the laws and recommendations of the creation. Your God, however, knows no such law or recommendation, for your God is a hazy picture or figment of the imagination. But the highest recommendation of the laws of the Ishwish is this, you shall esteem the Ishwish as the ruler of the new human species and follow his laws, for he is the king of wisdom of the human species and a good and fair advisor. And the highest recommendation of the laws of the emperor is this, you shall be obedient to the emperor, follow his laws, and give to him the tithe, because he is the ruler over the people and their guardian and protector. These are the three foremost and greatest in the laws, so the one of the creations and the other of the Ishwishes and that of the emperors, each determined according to its type. But the other, equal to the first, is this. You shall consider only the creation as the might of all things, or almighty, for it alone is permanent in everything and therein is timeless. The Ishwish and the Emperor are mortal, but the creation is immortal. These recommendations and laws are also taught by the prophets, so they are to be recognized and followed as true. The laws of the Ishwish and those of the Emperor are human laws, so they are intended to maintain law and order among the human beings. But the laws of the creation are the laws of life, and of the spirit, and of the continuance, or eternity, all great time. Therefore, they are immortal and permanent in endlessness and unchangingness. Likewise, immortal is the spirit in the human being, or part piece of creation spirit, which is a tiny part of the great and mighty spirit of creation. For how could it be that the creation itself would pass into non-existence? When the human being is dead, his or her spirit within him or her, or his or her spirit form, part piece of creation spirit, lives on in the invisible world, or other world. For it leaves this world and goes into the invisible world, or other world, where it will also continue to gather the wisdom of knowledge in order to return in greater knowledge, while also a new self, 
or a new personality, will come into being and, together with the return or rebirth of the spirit or spirit form, will be newly born. The greater the wisdom of the human being gained through the comprehending or learning of the spirit or consciousness, the more he or she determines his or her time to come or future in his or her life. But he or she does not determine as the new self or as the new personality in a new life, as well as not the subsequent activities of the new human being who arises from his or her uninvolved or neutral new power or neutral energy after the death. Since I am also a true prophet and know the time to come or future, I tell you that I will not return as the same self or personality as well as not as a representative of your God. So I will, therefore, not render judgment over all those who live according to confused teachings and who debase the wisdom of the knowledge of the spirit or spiritual knowledge, spiritual teaching. For only my spirit or spirit form, part piece of creation spirit, will return and the new self or new personality coming from it will be the last true prophet and will proclaim or teach the quote teaching of the prophets to all people unto the ends of the world or worldwide. And his words of the truth will be firm, or harsh, and without mercy, or open and without lenience. And many a person will seethe in evil rage because of them, and will maintain defamation about the prophet, or will defame him, and speak false testimony, or lies, against him, and seek to assassinate him, or seek to murder him insidiously. The firm or harsh words of the truth themselves will be instructive judgment and punishment for all those who at that time will live according to false and confused teachings and who will have already cursed and debased the wisdom of the knowledge of the spirit or spiritual knowledge spiritual teaching before and will continue to do so since the pharisees were now together emmanuel asked them saying quote, what do you think about me whose son am i they said quote, the son of david but he spoke to them how can I be the son of David when he has been dead already for a long time and I was begotten by Gabriel, the celestial son? And have you not read that David called me a true prophet when he said, quote, The Ishwish said to me, quote, Sit down to my right, for you are David, and from your distant descendants there will go forth Joseph, who will then have a foster son, Emmanuel, who will be begotten as a new self or personality by a celestial son, and he will therefore be the follower or successor of the next true prophet, Jeremiah. Since David calls me his prophet, how can I be his son? But no one among the Pharisees and Sadducees could answer him. But secretly, and then steadily more audibly, or more openly, they said, quote, He blasphemes God and the prophets. Let us try to catch and to kill him because he brings our position, or standing, ranking, into danger, so we will no longer be valid before the people, and we will then be discredited.